Valdez is the Rio Grande, and welcome to St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in beautiful Española, New Mexico. And I'm here with some wonderful lay leaders from St. Stephen's. St. Stephen's is a lay-led congregation and has been for a long time. And thanks to you all and others, we're rocking and rolling. Okay, I'm Alicia Byer smith I've been here probably, started coming here probably in 1962. At EYC, Episcopal Young Churchman. I was a student over at the Española Junior High, not far from here. So along with Jim Powers, who's not here today, we would walk from school over to here on Tuesday afternoons for EYC. I think it was uh, Father Todd, and then there was a Father Waylon shortly thereafter that led our EYC. And how many kids came over? Let's see, probably back then, there probably was probably about 10, nine or 10. How about that? And where we, everybody's all vanished, I simply unfortunately don't know. But you're still here. I'm still here. <laughs> and Jeb is still here. Thanks be to God. Uh, That's yes. wonderful. All right, well, we'll come back and ask some more about the history sure. of the church. Yeah. I'm Charlotte Jaramillo, and I came, probably I'm going to say about 2007, and then there was a little break in there, and then I came back in, in, uh, 2011, and have been there and active ever since. But it's my church. But you've been in Española a long time. Well, I was raised in Taos, and um, I came here about 2003. Okay. And I'm Diane Johnson, and I moved here in 1996. And shortly after I moved here, I discovered this church and joined. I had been Episcopalian pretty much always, and so been coming here ever since then. All right. Well, how has St. Stephen's changed over the years? Oh, greatly, greatly. Um, the structure itself is the same. The, the windows are the stone stain and above the altar, showing the cross and the chalice. It shows at 1960, that was commemorating the, when the church was first built. Okay. And so previous to that, we have the old um, pews, of course, with the kneelers, which is what was I was always used to. And so that was a big difference for me, getting used to always having that and to going with the chairs now and stuff like that. And so, of course, the... And there was carpet, And right? there was we, carpet we also, saw, yeah. We saw a photo of here. it, yeah. yeah. So that changed. Now, this wooden table over here, that's still original, but that one over there is different. Uh, the baptismal font, I think, I believe is the same. And over here in the left corner, that office, that was where or the vicar's office always was. So there was this church building and then the office. That was right there, exactly. the original building. And then the you all building. added the beautiful then we, parish hall. Well, we had a small parish hall. And then that was, I guess, enlarged, was it 19, it was the 19? It's in the 1990s, I think, 1990s because it was pretty so new when I got here. Okay, they so added that, know. included that. And stuff like that. And I'm try still trying to remember in my mind. I have to go back in time, try to remember 12 years old coming here, you know, <laughs> and stuff like that. And of course, at the altar, we had the kneelers. Mm -hmm. Well, we still have the step up, but that all that was taken out. There was a railing. And then, yeah. of course, there was a railing there Very also. People were. And the old, <laughs> the old altar is still in this, in this uh, back room. Well, just anyway, things have just changed greatly. And I tend to be more traditional. But anyway, things have changed and we're still here. So that's what's good. Yep, still going strong. We're still going strong, yeah, yes. Yeah. We were just across the street at the Bond House yeah. um, and had a tour. I'd never been inside over I hadn't either. This was the first time. And I, I mean, I was been living here since 1956. I was four years old at the time. So this was the first time at the Bond House. And that originally was... Uh, before that, I mean, after was that was City Hall at one point in time, and until the other City Hall was built. And apparently, that was originally built by the Bond family, the first few rooms, and then they expanded it as the kids came along. And the Bonds were here as the mercantile, so they had the like general store and that kind of thing. And they donated this land uh, for the church well, back exactly. a little over a hundred years ago, right? Mm -hmm. And the family is, as far as they still understand, are members of the cathedral. Or, oh, is that right? Yes. I'll have to look them up. Yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. So how did you find this church 
growing up here in Espanola, and what drew you here? Well, I was a member of Holy, uh, Santa Cruz de la Cañada, and um, we adopted a niece. My husband and I adopted a niece, and the people who were also in adopting another family were neighbors across the street, mm -hmm. and they suggested that we come here, and we came here and we fit, and we stayed here for a while, but then my husband got sick, and uh, I don't know, you know, after death, things just, so we moved time. away from everything. And when we came back in, it's my daughter who said, let's go back to the little church. And it was because of the youth. Mm -hmm. And so we were, we came back and that was about, we're going to say 2011. Okay. And uh, it was a full church. It's changed a lot. So there's people come and go. And as we see, we see it all over the place, gray hair. Yeah. We see a lot of gray hair in churches. Yeah. And, um, but my daughter was very active. She was, she went when she voted, when That's you were right. first elected. Yeah. Yeah. And, and she was confirmed just so that she could go to that conference. Is that right? And um, because she'd been active, but she was standing on the, and then she said, yeah, I want to go. So I need to do everything that I can so that I can be there. I think it's been interesting because we've gone through a period of time where we had several retired priests that would take turns mm -hmm. as part of the, uh, I guess the Chile line, you would know more about that, but, but, but they did, we would get different priests every week, and like what we're doing now, but uh, they were members. Well, when I first got here, there were three priests that took turns, but they were all, they weren't retired, but they had other jobs. Right. Okay. Like one of my uh, colleagues, he was a family practitioner in the daytime, and then he would do the services on Sunday. And was that when they were doing the chili line, as that was they the called it for a while. Yeah. And then they would rotate yeah. up to Chama. Yeah, right. so there was exactly. Los Alamos, Espanola, mm -hmm. and, Chama, and Chama, right? And, right. And, and the three which sort of But Los Alamos rotate. pretty much was separate. They had their own. It, it was. Mm -hmm. They always had a single. And sometimes we wouldn't have a Holy Eucharist because we didn't have a priest. And so then you did lead morning it prayer? Just, it was yeah. just uh, morning prayer. Right. Yeah. And the lay leadership here has really kept this congregation going through all mm -hmm. the changes, right? right. Different mm -hmm. configurations of clergy. Sometimes, like with Doug, there was a more recently, he was here kind of regularly. Mm -hmm. for a he was, a, I think he was the vicar. He was I mean, the yes. vicar, yep. He was part time, but I mean, but, but he, he was, was here. He was, yeah. Yep. So, and before that, the chili time. line with the three yeah. rotating yeah. through. And then yeah. since Doug, there's been more kind of some supply. And it's all supply, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, right now. It's all supply. Yeah, uh, but you know the thing is, the supply priests who come in, love it. Yeah, it I mean, it's just it's just that kind of congregation. It's just we're we're it's a family. It's warm, and you all look after each other. Mm -hmm. We were talking oh, earlier about how if somebody's not here for a while, the phone starts ringing, and you well, all find yeah. out. You know, are you okay? Somebody yeah. was yes. I remember that when somebody said, "When they're gone, you know, we should put it in the book, and so we know because that we worry about them." And then the idea of, no, you don't want to announce that their house is empty. Right. <laughs> but, you know, but we do miss people when they're not here. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a yeah, close well, community. And right. I always love coming here because it, it not only is the food great, but I was just say that so warm. The, the potlucks we had, were, we were really famous for the potlucks. Yes. Oh, yeah. What brought you here? Well, the post office used to be right across the street. And so I had a post office box there and I noticed there was an Episcopal church, which surprised me. And you had been Espanola, Episcopalian. And I was always, so I, yeah. 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 And what so brought you to Espanola? Um, I was a doctor at Espanola Hospital. And I just, it was a, it was an impulse. I wasn't happy with where I was. And I just impulsively moved here. <laughs> from, from <laughs> it was 26 where? years ago. And so it must Never have been, been all right. Unhappy, yeah. Yeah. From where? Washington State. Washington State. From yeah. the rain to the sun. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But I came the first day, and I remember Trish was wearing bright green, so it must have been in March, just before St. Patrick's Day, because I remember Trish vividly. She was all dressed in green from head to toe. A story. This is the way St. Stephen's is. I remember coming early, and we were, it was, we had gotten snowed in, and it was either Christmas or Thanksgiving. And I don't know, we had to dig ourselves out, and we, had, we lost, locked ourselves out. This is my daughter and I, because my husband had already died. And... Uh, we come to the church and we tell our story. And somebody from the parish, I'm not going to say who, <laughs> said, do you have a place to go? 
for Christmas dinner or Thanksgiving dinner. I don't remember. And we didn't all know each other because we were brand new. But that's St. Stephen's. Reaching out and making yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. 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 This is such a warm community. Yeah. yeah. And it's clear you all look after each other yeah. in a way that in some other churches I've seen, it's sort of the priest who does most of the things. But here, yeah, it's yeah. really the community. And the priest serves you all mm -hmm. and cares for you. But, mm -hmm. um, but you also care for each other. Yeah. So tell me about Española as a place for people, pretend people have never been here. What would you well, tell them about Española? Something, it, it, it so changed. Um, I remember when I was coming here, my godmother was an Episcopalian. Her name was Catherine Chuzo. And she was a long time member here. And what was interesting is she and my father had gone to college together at the University of New Mexico. And she was originally from Aztec, New Mexico. It just happened that when our, my family moved here in 1956, Catherine and her husband were already living here. Her husband worked at the bank. At that time, I had not been baptized. I was living with my grandparents when I was first born due to my mother being tuberculosis. And it was afraid of transmitting the tuberculosis from her to me. So in the meantime, I had never been baptized or christened. And so when I came here, I decided, yes, I want to be I wanted to be baptized. So Catherine Chuzo, she was originally here, was my, I chose it to be my godmother. So that's how I got involved in all this stuff. And back then, we had a woman by the name of uh, Jenny Wilder, who had been here a very, very long time by the church. And I remember, I think in the fall, they used to do a, a Christmas fair, a Christmas bazaar. And all the women in the church would make different things from um, knitting shawls to, you know, different things just to raise money for the church and this kind of stuff. And it was just a very close-knit committee. Jean Abbey was a long-time member here. We lost her recently this past October. But I think Jean was a member here, I believe, from 1956. And so she was a long-term member here. Mm -hmm. And other people, unfortunately, uh, Natalie Powers, she passed, she was a longtime member here, and her son is Jim Powers, who's still here. He and I went to EYC together, and Natalie passed away, I guess, I guess about four years ago also. So there's a lot of history in this church. It, it, I feel deeply connected to it, just from being so young at that time. And everybody was just very warm and kind and loving, and it still radiates this way. But in a way, I look back and I miss, I miss a lot of, oh, former parishioners have since gone on. But they're still treasured. But they're remembered. still treasured. Yeah. 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 Definitely remembered. So how would you describe Española as a place? Española has a bad image. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is substance abuse issue, I think, is the biggest mm -hmm. part of it. But it's, it's, a, it's a, I like it here. I've lived here. It, it, it's a, Different kind of community, very traditional, but at the same time, you know, just a, a kind of a forgotten community in lots of ways. Because there's a, there are a lot of, you know, we talked about the borderline issue. Well, it's here. There's, there's a big pocket of uh, undocumented workers in this area. But it's, there's, there's just this network of family. And that, that creates a situation where there's a lot of denial in terms of the substance abuse and alcoholism. But um, it also, it is, I would remember recognized once um, nationally as one of the places where people took in their grandkids or their nieces and nephews, as opposed to letting them go into foster care or into the system. Here, people don't do that. People take them in. And I remember reading that and I was real amazed that it got, this was one of the communities that was recognized that way. Wow. That sense of extended family mm -hmm. is still really important. It's yeah. real tied. Mm -hmm. And economically, I understand that a lot of folks work in Santa Fe. Or, I mean, it's sort of 20, 20 minutes to Santa Fe, 30 minutes to Los Alamos. People right. run up and down the hill and, mm -hmm. and there, and Taos isn't that far away either. Yeah. Is that kind of the way yeah. people are and, employed and, but can afford to live here in a way that Santa Fe is expensive? Well, right, yeah. right. And then the, the, what, what is here, the schools, mm -hmm. the county, uh, the, the city offices, that kind of, yeah. 
I remember coming here when I was growing up because I, I was a big baseball player and played Little League all the time. And we used to always come down and play Pewaukee, but also to play Espanola. And the Blakes was where we went afterwards, oh, <laughs> after yeah. the game. So I have yeah. fond memories of coming down here. Yeah. And then, and then the other thing that was happening when I was when I was young is we would come on Friday nights for the lowriders. Oh yeah, there was a big culture around cars and automobiles, and they you know put the shocks on and bounce and all of that. Mm -hmm. Famous for that too. We would come down and you know sit in the parking lot and watch them come by. And and it was always famous for food. The yes. restaurants were always super good. And still are. And still and are. Still are good. Good right. food here. In fact, you all just fed us a delicious lunch. So, how has the congregation changed over the years that you have been here? Well, it's. I think it's gotten smaller, mm -hmm. and there aren't too many young people. No, I think my kids were the last of the youth group. Well, then Amelia, mm -hmm. there was some mm -hmm. when she came. And they're starting to be. I think there were and, five yeah. young people in church today. So. They're starting a new beginning, maybe. Yeah. Hopefully. They come to Taze, which is wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah in fact, the, um, we were just learning about uh, the Taze service, which happens Wednesdays, and uh, it's mostly young people, I mm -hmm. think two or three, and they help plan it and sing the Taze service. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Taze, the Taze service is led by Dove and some young people, and she, Dove, was confirmed today. She's a it's wonderful so musician. It's all kinds of yeah. possibilities. Yeah, because it's the kind of, uh, often the Episcopal Church is a church that people in town haven't heard of, maybe because it's predominantly Roman Catholic. The, but there, there are, in a lot of towns like this, people who are maybe culturally Roman Catholic, but they're not active, and they're looking for a place where their children can be baptized if there's a divorce in mm -hmm. the family or something like that. And this is a and place where happens. they can really be welcomed into the fold yeah. and receive the sacraments. In a way that's not always possible in other churches. Well, I want to thank you all for your faithfulness and for keeping this church going and for spending time to share St. Stephen's Espanola with the diocese today. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>